Hey everyone, it's your favorite Showtime at the Apollo. No, I'm just kidding. This is your favorite guest hostesses with the Mosesses, Marcus and Carmia Wales and Orthodox Southern Bell. Rocking the stage today, and we got this is this is huge for me, right? This man that we got coming to the stage, he's in Dubai, but he helps so many businesses, right? Figure out whether they should trademark, whether they should protect themselves, what is a trademark, and everything in between. This man is helping us take things to the next level and protect our assets, our business, and whether or not I'm gonna ask the hard question today, Carmia. I'm gonna ask the hard question. I don't know what questions you got, but I'm gonna ask the hard question: When should we trademark our stuff? Because that's super mm. important. Um, you all are tuning into Gentleman Style Podcast. We are on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Ghana, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook Business Page, anywhere, Audible, anywhere you get your podcast today, and we are spreading the word. We are sounding the horn that you need to get trademarked because this is important. It's important. Thieves are everywhere. Thieves are everywhere. They're stealing content. They're stealing our content, Carmia's content all the time. You know it. You love it. So you won't want to miss one second of what this epic guest has to share. So without further ado, here we go. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is your favorite hostesses with the most of this gentleman style podcast show, Marcus A, the unorthodox Southern Belle, Carmia Wells. Carmia Wells. Lovely, lovely. This man we have come into the stage, like I said, he's helping many businesses across the globe trademark, know when to trademark, what is a trademark, what's important to understand when trademarking, and we can't hold this fantastic guest back. He is currently in Dubai, but he travels all over the world helping corporations protect their business assets and investments but we're going to start at the content creator level right because that's what we are we here to serve you serve the people we got micro influencers and everything in between so but it's he's gonna debunk this myth on whether or not a content creator should trademark their business today so without further ado help me welcome to the stage the incredible mr andre minkoff <laughs> hey absolute rock star sir welcome to the gentleman style podcast show we are happy to have you here it is a pleasure to host you on our platform sir you look sharp love it love it love thank you for being here thanks for having me excited to be with you and your audience absolutely absolutely sir gonna kick it off with uh a, a icebreaker here i want to i want to start slow right you have a unique skill set. You've been helping many people protect their trademark and business. But I want to start. What is the definition in your expertise? What is the definition of trademark? What does that mean? Because I get confused, as I can imagine some people do get confused between trademark, copyright, infringement, all of that in between. So help us out. What's, what's trademarking mean? And you actually showed that confusion in <laughs> the intro <laughs> where... Uh, you said that you can somehow protect your content through trademarks. You cannot. So, mm -hmm. so I think you, you, that's a perfect way to start this, um, the, the podcast. So let me, let me, let me go with this. Uh, copyright protects content. That's what the purpose of copyright is. It protects books, videos, uh, music, software, anything that's really content right and it protects content uh from the perspective of how do you express a certain idea how do you express a certain thought so for example if i write a book about intellectual property it doesn't mean that someone else cannot write another book about intellectual property but uh no one can take paragraphs from my book and just copy paste them in their book right that's what copyright is for uh, then you have patents, which is another type of intellectual property, uh, and patents protect inventions. They, they, they protect the original genius ideas, so to speak, right? Whether it's a new product or a new method. And then we have trademarks. What trademarks protect? Pro trademarks protect 
brands. Uh, they can protect brand names, product names, names of services, logos, taglines. So something that allows the market to tell your product apart from everyone else's products. So <clears throat> the best example I can give you about trademarks, think about this. And it also shows the power of a trademark as well. So when you go to a supermarket uh, to buy your toothpaste, right? You go to the shelf and they have a whole shelf of tubes with the same glop in it. Uh, the only difference is that they have different names. And that's how you pick one tube with glop, not the other tube <laughs> with the same glop. That's what the function of a trademark is. Same, same thing with ketchup, right? You the, the, the purpose of a trademark is not to protect the recipe. The purpose of the trademark is not to uh, give you the monopoly on the product itself. The purpose of the trademark is to allow the market to tell your stuff apart from your competitors. Thank you for, for distinguishing that. So I want to stick right here because I love ketchup, right? And so ketchup... Who doesn't? <laughs> so <laughs> ketchup, right? So trademarking protects it just identifies me as i'm heinz ketchup carmia yeah. is unsalted, not heinz because <laughs> basically the, uh, basically it's a brand name type thing it's basically the name of your product that it protects the brand name could be a could be a logo like nike mm -hmm. a swoosh mm -hmm. could be the tagline just do it right and uh, actually alex hermosi talks about it a lot in his recent videos uh, about the the uh, the value of the brand. Like, think about this. You take a white T-shirt that costs you forty cents. You you put a swoosh on it, right? Mm. And you sell it for fifty bucks. Mm. Why? Because people want to associate with a brand. Because people think that if it comes from Nike, then it's worth paying for uh, that t-shirt significantly more money than you would have paid for the exact same t-shirt without the swoosh, right? And uh, that's uh, th that's the beauty. That's the power of the brand. That's why uh, they always say, you know, first you work for the brand, then the brand works for you. Uh, and and uh, th this is actually one of the uh, one of the factors that you take into account when you decide, hey, do I even need to protect the brand? Do I, you know, is it is it important or not? The question is, do you see yourself in the future with that brand or not? So, so let me get it straight. Let me get it straight. I can buy this fifty nine cent t shirt and I can slap a gentleman style logo on it and I can charge more because that logo is trademarked. If that brand means something to somebody, yes. So a trademark by itself is not going to make your business successful. Okay. Right. Uh, but a trademark will ensure that if you have a successful business, you will own it. You will own the brand. It will be yours, right? That basically a trademark will ensure that your successful business remains yours and not get taken away by someone else who didn't have the, the foresight to build something like this, someone who didn't, uh, you know, have those sleepless nights trying to figure this out. And they just went ahead and trademarked the brand and then sued you, right? When you have, when you do this first, when you trademark your brand first, you protect yourself from stuff like this happening. Absolutely. That's a nugget. That's a nugget. I need to, I need to get like a spare mic that I could drop every now and again. <laughs> but, but anyway, this is huge and this is big, right? Because I think we mess this up all the time, like I just did <laughs> in, the, in the beginning. So tr when do you recommend someone trademark? Is it when they're in the beginning phases, in the startup phases of business or their brand? Or is it when they got 10 million subscribers? Hey, now I should, should trademark this because I've obviously built this from the ground up. When is the right time to trademark? Um. It's easy, actually. Mm. The right time is to trademark your brand one day before somebody else does. 
<laughs> so basically, the is, of course, you don't know when that happens, right? And that's where all this uncertainty comes from. So really, there is no such thing as urgency with trademarks, because at first it's not urgent because, well, who's going to steal my brand? I'm too, I'm too small. Nobody cares. And then when somebody does steal your brand, it's already too late. So it's not urgent anyway, anymore. Right. And so really the, the, the framework that I always recommend is this first, you need to figure out in the best case scenario, will there be a need for you to trademark your brand? Right. Is, is, is it, because not every business needs a trademark. And so the questions, there are two questions in this framework. The first question is, um, is it likely that uh, two or three years from now, I'll be selling the same products or services that I'm selling now or planning to sell now under the same brand, assuming everything goes well, right? Assuming everything goes as you're hoping it, it might go, right? Will you still be under that brand two, three years from now? If the answer is no, then I would say probably don't bother with trademarking because trademarking is a long process. It takes about a year and a half in the US, it takes close to four years in, in Canada now, right? Mm. So it's not like a like getting a domain name when you 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 go to some website, pay them 10 bucks, and then you have the 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 uh the registration right away. It takes a long freaking time. So, right? So that's the first question. Because if you're not gonna have that same brand. By the time you get the trademark, why bother? Same, same second question you ask yourself is, okay, assuming you're still there in the future with that brand and assuming again, everything goes perfectly well, um, that, you know, you're growing as much as you want it to grow. You have the customers, you have the recognition, you know, you have the money, like everything is perfect. Uh, second question you ask yourself is this, is this brand helping me? grow faster, right? Do I get more people to find us because of the brand or to remember us because of the brand? Is it easier for us to sell? Like, do we have higher conversions because of the brand? Is it easier for me to attract better clients because of the brand? Um, it, better workers, right? Better, better employees, because is it easier for me to get investor money because of the brand? Like, is the brand doing anything for me? two, three years from now. Mm -hmm. If the answer to that is no, then the good solution to that is go back to the drawing board and come up with a better brand because <laughs> the brand can be the most valuable asset of your business. You know, just like, you know, Nike and things like that. Like the whole Nike business is valued at 97 billion. Uh, the the uh, brand, just the brand alone, right? not the factories, not their shoes, not their sneakers, not their people, not, just the brand is worth 47 out of 97, right? Uh, so th they got something right. So if you, you, if you know that whatever brand you came up with is not going to help you, why not go back while, while nobody knows about you? and think of something that might be useful to you, okay? And then if you do think that, uh, well, yeah, if everything goes as I wanted, as I hoped, uh, and uh, we become a successful business and the brand is gonna be helpful in helping me grow, then the time to get it trademarked is now. Because the sooner you do it, the easier it is. The, um, like, Think, think about this. The second you come up with a brand, um, the value of your brand is zero. The potential value of your brand is huge, but the second it's still in your head, nobody knows about it, right? There's no value to anyone other than you. It's also the most trademarkable this brand will ever be, right? We don't know if it, it's trademarkable at that time, but it's not going to get any more trademarkable right. uh, because the more it's people positive. find out about you, the more people uh, to, to, to more people, your brand gets exposed, the more people fall in love with your products or services, the more people uh, start getting jealous of your success, right? The value of your brand goes up.
So it almost and sounds the- it almost sounds like in line with as you gain as the brand gains notoriety, yes. it's the time to that's when you need to trademark. Because I would say before, before, before because you want to be the first person to realize the value of that brand. Uh, yeah. And uh, really, that's what all the successful businesses that we all look up to, that's what they do. Right? You think Coca-Cola, they filed their trademark in 1892 mm-hmm. uh, when they were selling nine drinks a day. I call it a lemonade stand with a dream, right? They knew that if they wanted to have a business, the brand was their business. It wasn't the uh, the, the 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 water, you the know, ingredients. With, it wasn't the ingredients. It was the brand, and now it's worth over seventy billion dollars, right? There's another one that I really like um, uh, in terms of example: uh, Bird, the uh, the uh, scooter rental company. Okay. Right. Okay. So they they were actually one. They're recognized as uh, the fastest company to get to a billion dollar valuation. Took them like a year and a couple of months. And uh, what they did is they started their company. And 13 days after that, they filed their trademark. That was before they had any scooters. That was before they had any, any contracts. That was before they had anything. But these guys realize that you can't build this business without owning the brand. Because if anyone can slap a bird logo to their scooters, like the whole system collapses. <laughs> like you, you can't have a business like this, right? And I can give you examples like this all day long. Uh, really, if you think about it, you go to a supermarket, you look at uh, you know your favorite products, they're all trademarked. They're right. all trademarked. Uh, if you look at top three companies in whatever industry that you are in, they're all trademarked. Right. It's not a coincidence. And it's, I mean, like I said, a trademark doesn't do magic for the business, but without it, you can't get to the magic stage of your business. Hmm. I want to know... Why, mm. what, why do people, I understand trademarking like a logo, insignia, Nike. You've given some great, great examples with that. But why do people trademark their name like Oprah, right? Tr- she's br- branded herself as Oprah, Oxygen, but Oprah everywhere. Why trademark your name? What's the benefit in that? Because I was born with that name. So clearly it's me. Why do, I, why do people trademark their name? Great question. So the reason they trademark their brain their name is uh not to ensure that other parents don't call their children <laughs> the same name. it's not about that right because what trademarks do trademarks don't give you a monopoly over the name by itself trademarks give you a monopoly uh on the name or the the logo or tagline in connection with specific products or services that you sell right uh, and that's another common misunderstanding. People say, well, how, how can people, you know, trademark dictionary words? Well, Apple is a dictionary word, right? It's one of the <laughs> most value, valued trademarks out there. Uh, their brand is worth over $300 billion, right? Uh, and it's because they don't sell apples. It's because the stuff that they sell has nothing to do with apples, right? Uh, so they picked the name that was arbitrary and uh, they chose it as their brand. And so going back to personal names, uh, again, the, the point is not to get a monopoly on not allowing anyone else to call their children that same way. But the point is to ensure that nobody else calls their businesses their re- in the related industries the same way. Uh, because then that, that would be an unfair competition. Right. So Tony Robbins did this and, uh, you know, all for this. There's so many of them. Uh, and the, the the idea is that they trademark it in connection with specific, like we trademarked a ton of trademarks for uh, my mentor, Dan Locke. Right. Um, I think we did like 160 trademarks for all of his stuff uh, and uh, including his name. And what it allowed him to do is shut down unauthorized Facebook groups, unauthorized YouTube channels, like because people were trying to do to, to do stuff to clone him. And he's like, I got a trademark. And YouTube was like, okay, done, right? Without it, mm-hmm. it's very hard to do something like this. 
Uh, and uh, so if your name uh, means more than, you know, just how your parents and your your wife and your children call you, right? Actually, it means something in, in the business world in terms of products and services, then it might be a good idea to consider like Tommy Hilfiger, you know, things like that. Because he trademarked the brand, like Tommy, again, because he wants to make sure that there are no apparel lines that have a name too close to Tommy Hilfiger so that he can sell his stuff and continue building his brand. Does that, does that make sense? That makes absolute mm -hmm. sense. That makes absolute sense. That's that's huge. That's big, y'all. Big, y'all. So maybe I need to start considering trademarking Marcus. Marcus Norman. Uh, <laughs> just to make sure that that I can continue to build on in case I, even it sounds like even it's like future planning, right? It's like you and, have and to actually, have. Actually, actually, I'm sorry. Let, 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 I just want to uh, sneak something in before before we you know turn the page on trademarking names. Mm -hmm. Trademarking names is actually harder than trademarking pretty much any other brands. I bet precisely because of that reason that there can be other people with the same name. So USPTO and SIPO and, you know, all, all of those uh, trademark offices around the world, they have rules. And those rules are with personal names, there is a special regime. You have to show them that, that you're doing more than just trying to trademark your name because you think it's cool, right? There has to be some level of recognition before they're like, okay, we get it. Right. So more, more than just, you know, I'm verified on Facebook or Instagram. So it has to be more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. Mm -hmm. How much does trademarking cost average, average range? Um, and, and what do you get from it? Like what, what, what's the process when someone contacts you, what's the process and how much money should they have before they set up an appointment or a consultation with you and your team? Sure. Uh, so what we're known for is uh, trademarking services with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget. This is something that I came up with, what is it, in 20, 2011 initially, and then we rebranded to Trademark Factory in 2013. And so that was kind of the big deal in that instead of charging you by the hour, instead of charging you by every time we think about your file or every time we touch your file, you would be, you would get a quote before you start. And then whatever happens in the middle, we take care of it and you don't have to pay. So, and, and just, just to make everything, you know, make it clear, trademarking is a really complicated process. It looks simple, mm -hmm. but there's a ton of stuff that happens before you file your trademark. And there's a ton of stuff that happens after you file your trademark. And, uh, uh, that's really where all that magic is. And Trademark Factory has an unparalleled level of success in this industry. We got a 99.3% success rate when the industry average is 51.2, 51.7, sorry. Uh, and uh, there's a reason for that. So the, the reason we are so successful, uh, the, the number one reason is that the first thing we do is we'll do a comprehensive trademark research uh, and uh, provide you with a registrability assessment so that you don't waste time and money trying to trademark a brand that won't go through. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the, the biggest deal because the way we do, we look at a billion different things to, um, to make sure that the brand is registrable and that we catch any possible problems with it. And uh, so that's kind of the first phase. Then we file your trademark with a, with a licensed attorney or a trademark agent. That's another big thing because there's a ton of websites out there that are that are going to tell you, hey, you know, pay us a hundred bucks and uh, we'll trademark your brand in five minutes. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not real. All, that's, that's not, not real. Well, well, I mean, what they're going to do is they're going to take your hundred bucks uh, and they're going to copy paste the stuff that you're going to give them in the uh, in the form without checking it, without like it's an automated process and they're going to file your trademark in your own name right it's it's basically just glorified uh you know software service so and and uh there's no attorney of record there is nothing uh and if something happens to your trademark and it does in 81 percent of the cases to self-represented applicants 
then you're on your own trying to figure out how to fix that. Uh, with us, because you have an attorney of record and because it's a flat fee that covers everything, they're going to take care of all of this from start to finish. And uh, they're going to uh, get you your trademark approved and allowed and registered. And uh, if you go with our premium package, the one that's really made Trademark Factory what, what it is, uh, it's, it, it's all guaranteed. It's one flat fee from start to finish, right? And uh, so that's uh, 2,500 bucks plus the government fees. And we, we do have, you know, entry level packages that are uh, cheaper than that. Uh, but again, mo most people go with a $2,500 package because to them, it's a good test of, am I willing to gamble with my brand and my trademark or do I want to get it done right? Uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's the, the way I see it, it's a big enough number uh, to uh, separate, uh, you know, those for whom the brand is a hobby from those to, to whom the brand is a business. Uh, and uh, it means you're taking it serious. You're taking it seriously. Exactly. It means uh, you're because if you're like, hey, you know, I'm just going to file it. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, who cares? Then you're, you know, you're, you're, you're not our client. But if you actually know that this is important to you, that you want to get it done, that you want to get it done right, so that you get the certificate once it's, once it's, once it's done, and that you don't want to, like the biggest problem, like look, the, 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 here's the thing with cost of trademarks, uh, because I, mean, I can give you numbers all day long, but the, the, the really important thing is not how much you pay to get your brand trademarked. The real cost is there's kind of two, two additional prices that you pay for trademarks. One is that how much will it cost you to rebrand or mm. be a defendant in a trademark litigation lawsuit if you don't trademark your brand? Mm. That's going to cost you a lot more money than 2500 bucks. I can't promise you that. Like the 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 average cost of rebranding is 30 30,000 bucks. The average trademark litigation lawsuit is 170k. That's a lot of money. Nice. Right? And the second price that you're going to pay is what are you going to, you know, what is it going to cost you if you file your trademark, you wait for a year and a half and then you get a final refusal. Like all the money that you will have spent promoting your brand, all the money that you'll spend, you know, trying to get people to know your brand, to build the brand is gone because you don't own it. Right. And without a trademark, the way I, the, the way I see it, it's not only that you don't own your brand, you don't even have a brand. You have a, you know, a word and a phrase or an image that you want to be your brand, but it doesn't become your brand until you can legally Tell your competitor, stop this. This is mine, and you cannot do this. Without a trademark, you, you can't do that, Absolutely. right? You, 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 you can send them you know, requests, please take it down. I was here first. They're going to ignore you because, look, here, here's what happens when you, you, you send a sys and desist or demand letter about, you know, you're infringing on my brand. Uh, here's, what, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. the, the other side that gets this letter they, uh, they find their lawyer, they show the letter to their lawyer. First thing the lawyer does is he checks or he, she checks. Did they trademark this brand? And if the answer is no, they didn't, the lawyer is, the lawyer is gonna say, ignore this. And uh, you're gonna say, well, well why? They, they sound so, so dangerous, they sound so threatening. And he's gonna say, look, they didn't bother to pay a little bit of money to trademark their brand. Do you think they're gonna spend a hundred times that trying to take you to court to fight you to disagree with you you make up you make a very great point and again this is huge this is huge so we, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break because speaking of branding and marketing we got we got sponsors to pay <laughs> we gotta yeah. pay homage so don't go anywhere stay tuned stay with us we'll be right right back with some great questions from mr minkoff this man is spilling the tea on gentleman style podcast show We'll be right, right back. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. 
Wooden cribs start at $17 a day. High chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We have the incredible Mr. Andre Minkoff spilling the tea on trademarks and why they're absolutely crucial to your business, to your brand, and how you can protect them with his company and how he and his team work with you to get this going. So, Mr. Minkoff, you, you, share, you shared earlier uh, um, that you want to protect your brand. It takes about a year, two years process. So you're telling me before I even open my doors to business, I should do the trademark first. And I can't con- I can't run my business until that trademark is complete. Help me understand, because you gave the great example about the scooter company, Bird, that 13 days after they initially had the idea or started, they trademarked. But they were in operation, correct? So can you operate while still waiting for your trademark to go through or no? Or what's the process? Yeah. Th- th- thank you for asking this. Uh, this is actually a very good question. So the important part is getting your trademark in the door in the trademark's office. Once you file it, then, you, then you're almost safe, right? Uh, because nobody else will be able to come after you and get that same trademark. So yes, you can start... Uh, selling your products you can start promoting your products like if, if if you look at what apple does they don't make any announcements to the world about their new stuff unless and until they've trademarked that brand first because they know that the second they announce something there will be people who will try to take advantage of that and you know they 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 look at it and they're like okay apple took care of this um so <laughs> So, so if you if you think about this, like there's kind of three big stages, three big uh, parts, sections of uh, of how your brand is protected. First, there's the danger zone, uh, and that's all the time between you coming up with a brand to you filing your trademark application. Okay. That includes doing the research that we we told you about. Like sometimes, you know, you do the search. We we oh, we do the search for 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 a brand owner, and we're like, okay, your brand is registrable, and they're like, well, I need another three months to think about it whether I want to file it. Like, dude, the search doesn't protect you. Right. you it just tells you that today your brand is registrable. It might not be registrable tomorrow, right? So it's still a danger zone. Like all this time when you're setting up your domain name, incorporating your company, uh, you know, because look, if, if, if getting a domain name was all you needed to protect your brand, why would Google get a trademark? Why would Facebook get a trademark? Right. And they all do. Um, so that's danger zone. The second part, the second segment is, uh, protection is from the time you file your trademark application to the time it gets registered. Right. And that can be, depending on the country, you know, a year, two, three, four, whatever. And then there's the third, there's a third big segment, and uh, that's called ownership. That that comes after your trademark is registered. That's when the government said, yes, this is your trademark. You are now presumed to be the owner of the legal valid trademark. And the best thing about trademarks is, like, to circle back to where we started this podcast, is that trademarks is the only type of intellectual property that can in theory last forever patents expire they only last 20 years copyrights expires they last 70 years after the death of the last co-author trademarks you can renew them and renew them and renew them and renew them and that's what coca-cola does since 1892 and they're they're going to keep doing it because again you know it's their most valuable asset so how, off, how often do you need to renew your trademark? Every 10 years. Every 10 years. And that's why Coca-Cola does. So every 10 years, Coca-Cola is hitting that button, coming to you, reaching out to you, and, and hitting that renew button. Do you do renewals at your company as well? We do renewals. Yeah, we don't do renewals for Coca-Cola. They're not our, our client yet. But <laughs> okay. okay. But uh, yes, we, we do renewals. We notify you. And uh, in U.S., actually, there's another, uh, in addition to the, renewal every 10 years there's one more uh 
time that you need to do a maintenance for filing between the fifth and sixth anniversary of your trademark mm -hmm. registration. So a lot of people don't know about this. Is This is how a lot of brands die because nobody told them. And uh, especially when you file with, you know, some of those filing services, they're either not around anymore or when they are, they, 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 they don't track this. Kind of stuff. And so the business owners sits there thinking, great, I have my brand protected. And then sometime later, I don't know, seven, nine years in, somebody tells them, hey, do, do you know that your trademark is dead? They're like, what do you mean dead? You go to the trademarks office and it shows actually status dead. They got live and dead. And dead it means that you didn't bother to file make this maintenance filing between the fifth and sixth anniversary. And that to me um, is so infuriating because they did everything right, right? They 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 filed their trademark on time, they got the trademark on time, and then nobody told them that they have to renew. And this is so so uh, unsettling and uh, they have to start the process from from the very beginning and if someone else jumps in before they refile they're not going to get their trademark and they can't say well we were you know we had this trademark seven years ago trademark office doesn't care it's dead so it doesn't so it doesn't transfer over like hey i've i'm coca-cola i've been filing this trademark since 18 skippity two and then i dropped the ball this one time this one 10-year cycle and someone swooped in, jumped in, and all that work, all that history is lost? Yep. And that's that's another reason why big companies have a whole portfolio of trademarks. Like Coca-Cola doesn't only have one trademark, right? Uh, Apple, I think, has 1,300 trademarks. Amazon has about 1,400 in, in U.S. alone, right? Uh, and they, they trademark pretty much everything. So in case one of the trademarks somehow dies, right? They have all those other ones that will support it. Uh, and uh, if you only have one, then you don't really have all that much to, to, to support you. Big facts. Big facts. Huge. Huge. This is epic. This is epic. I feel like, I feel like you could almost make a business out of just waiting, right? And watching and going around social media and just like, oh, this person has 10,000 followers. They got a notable brand. They got products that are selling constantly. Let me go check real quick if they got that trademark. Oh, they don't. You could almost run a whole business just catching people and trademarking their stuff. And what, what does that entitle you to the business? Does that automatically make you an owner? To the business, no. if someone catches you and they're like, "Oh, you didn't trademark this. I'm, sh I'm, I'm taking it over." Does that no? It, no, it doesn't entitle you to their business, but it does entitle you to uh, forcing them to rebrand, and that entitles you to suing them for all the money that that they made under what they thought was their brand, but turned out to be your brand. So ah. as soon as and 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 that's the that's the uh, hard. You know hard truth about trademarks so for example like you, you you start your business i don't know x y z umbrellas i don't know why i said that <laughs> <laughs> x twitter <laughs> right <co. laughs> and, and uh, you've been selling those umbrellas for god knows how long and then someone comes around and they're and they get a trademark on xyz umbrellas uh and uh they find a lawyer who goes after you and say we trademarked this brand in 2023 and we see that you have been selling x umbrellas under xyz brand that's our trademark how much money have you made selling umbrellas and they're like well we made this much money it's like, great we want it yep <laughs> leave in the chat right <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> That's evil. Oh, they just it, it is after. evil. And, and, and look, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, well, that's evil and that's wrong. And it's true. And um, But the, the only way you prove that it's evil and it's wrong is if you spend the money defending yourself in a lawsuit. And that costs a lot of money, too. And that's the money that nobody's going to give back to you. 
So if that happens, right, you find a lawyer who's going to defend you, who's going to say, hey, judge, look, these guys trademarked it in 2023. My guys have been doing it since, you know, 2005. And they're going to have to have experts that are going to have witnesses, all that kind of stuff, right? And the judge is going to say, hmm, look, their lawyer's right. Like, you can't win this lawsuit. Uh, so you, you're going to keep that trademark because you were the one who, who, who got the trademark. You can't sue the original one, but the original one can't expand. And uh, mm. so the judge is going to say, these guys should not pay you. And uh, on the one hand, you're like, great, we won. But what you have as the outcome is two things. One, you, you cannot expand. Right. So you cannot open new locations because these guys have a trademark. Right. Uh, you cannot open. You cannot license this brand. You cannot do anything with it because it's not yours. It's theirs. Right. And second thing that happens is that you have this bill from a lawyer who won this case for you. I don't know. He charged you for however many hours they spend. I don't know. 50, 70, 100 grand. Uh, and just because you won doesn't mean that the other side is going to compensate it because they are the rightful owner of the brand, right? And so that's not the gamble you want to play. It's kind of stupid if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> you what? know, so if you are that XYZ umbrellas who've been selling umbrellas since 2005, don't wait for someone else to trademark your brand in 2023 and then sue in 2024. Have you had any horror stories? Do you have any clients that were on the fence? They were reaching out to you. Um, they had started that process and, but they were still in the danger zone. And then you saw that someone else got there before them. You have any stories like that? Do you have any, have you ever experienced that with a client or a potential yeah. client? Ha happens all the time. I think the one that I remember the most, it was in my, when I was just starting this company, right. And we were just trying to figure out how to get clients and how to get the world to know that we exist. <laughs> um, I was living in vancouver canada back in the day and so i saw a bus and on the bus there was this ad for a company that was um, um it was garbage collection company okay uh, and uh like this is how my mind works i came home i checked whether they were trademarked they weren't i reached out to them like it was me reaching out to them saying hey guys i saw your ad so you're not trademark or a trademarking company. We have this, you know, good experience. Let's do this. And they're like, well, yeah, sure. We're, we're still thinking about this. We actually, you know, it's great that you reached out because we were thinking about it, but we need a little bit more time to think about it. And uh, so they came back four months in uh, and someone filed a trademark in, you know, a month before they, they came back. And when they came back on month four, I'm like, great, finally, you guys realize that this needs to be done. Let us do the search. Like, let us check if it's still trademarkable. And uh, we, we checked and lo and behold, someone filed that trademark. And I'm like, mm. we, we, we can't do this for you. And I was like, why, why not? Because we're not going to get you your trademark. We're not suicidal. We're not going to give you a guarantee on something we know we can't get you. Right. And... Uh, they were like, so what do we do now? I'm like, well, I guess you now have to rebrand. Like, and all the money that we spend on ads and client awareness, like, I told you. <laughs> I, like, that's the reason I called you four months ago. And, and uh, you know, the, he, 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 he wasn't very happy about this. And the funny thing is that uh, I guess he was so shocked. He's like, well, you know, we're just going to keep going without a trademark then. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing you can, you know, take out of this conversation because like <laughs> they're, they're going to, they're going to sue you. Uh, and, uh, well, that hurts. What, what ended up happening? So I, you know, I kept checking every now and then, and they just went out of business about a year and a half after that. that right. Hurts. So, and, 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 and again, look, it's, it's as, as we, we discussed, you know, it's kind of a litmus test about are you serious about this business or is it just, you know, uh, a, a hobby? Like, or you like the idea of you running a business?
business, right? And um, you know, getting a trademark is is one of those one one of those uh, um, you know litmus test criteria that shows you shows the actually shows so many people uh, that you don't even realize because when you file your trademark, it telegraphs the world that you are being serious about this that you're that that you're planning to be around for a long time absolutely because if if if, if you weren't you wouldn't be filing the trade so when you go to the bank and ask for a loan when you go to investors uh and want them to invest in you when you when you uh you know try to get some business with serious clients they're going to check all this you think yeah. they don't care they do care uh and you know it's if you're thinking about maybe franchising your business uh if you're like well you know i i'm i'm thinking of franchising we might start looking for franchisees in about six months i'm like great you were one year too late like what do you mean well the process takes a year and a half you want to have your first franchisee six months from now what are they going to get a franchise on from you like you don't even own the brand that you're trying to franchise. You don't own it. The, the I, reason McDonald's, the reason McDonald's charges a million dollars for to open a new franchise location is because they own the brand. If anyone could set up a burger joint and place the Golden Arches, you know, on the highway, yeah. say, "Hey, you come here, we got great burgers," and we're only no half a million dollars. We're half a million. <laughs> <laughs> we're half a. I can think of I can think of one friend right now that should consider trade. Carmia, what do you do? You know anybody, especially as a model? Do you know anybody that should consider trademarking like their because modeling you're your brand, right? So this right. is unique. But to like, but like he said, typically with modeling, you're using your name or you use your name or you use your stage name. Stage name, excuse me. <laughs> so as he stated. Uh -oh. It's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> They're stripping it. No, I'm joking. But <laughs> as he stated, it's a little bit more difficult to trademark your name. So I'm just gonna throw a name out there. She's she's somehow famous. Like say for example, it's Brittany Renner decides she's um social media, she does reality TV. If she decides to go and do that, that's her name, and it's gonna be more difficult because you don't know if there's another Brittany Renner out there. So it gets real funny. Sure. Like, I don't know. Like, we, we all know who Beyonce knows is. We know who Beyonce is, but I'm pretty sure her name was used again. I was going to bring this up. Beyonce had trademarked her brand, like, really early on before she was as big as she is now. Mm. And for all sorts of things, for, you know, for entertainment services, for you know, music, for, like, for, for, for all the stuff that she does, she trademarked it. Uh, actually... I think she I trademarked her kids too. I think she trademarked her yeah. baby. Blue Ivy and um the rest of the babies. Um, and, and Coco Cabana. So. Yeah. So all I'm, the I'm actually Not checking when she followed her Coco first Cabana. Was that Coco Cabana? Coco Cabana. I'm, I'm silly. I'm being silly. But that's, that's I was about to say, what child is that? So so Mr. Minkoff, you do you recommend a model, a model trademark? Like they're 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 a model's it's all they have is their stage name or name, right? So they're, but they have products, they have affiliates, mm -hmm. they have companies reaching out to them to wear their clothing, you know, because it's it's almost like a blend. That's kind of like weird. Well, well, we, well, you're 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 contradicting yourself because they're not. If if they have those products, then it's not just the model, mm. right? If you have a line of underwear or you have some shoes or you have some bags or some, and you put your name on that that's yeah. what the brand is for right even if it's and, a waist and, trainer and, a and, uh, line. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and and that's the you know that that's why people pay those models to promote their stuff right there's you know all sorts of arrangements where you know who gets the sh what which share of what right because you know i'm, I'm assuming she's not the one standing in at the factory making the <laughs> you know the, the stuff but her agreeing to slap her name on the product is what makes the product valuable mm -hmm. because again you you can make the same underwear uh you know in in, in china and for you know and you, know, you, you 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 buy it by weight right but the second it has a label on this 
that people want to pay extra for, that's when it becomes valuable. And of course it needs to be trademarked. If we're in the information, this is huge. I, I We have one more commercial break. We'll, don't go away. I got a really good question that I need to ask. It's about technology and AI. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with it. We'll be right Right I'm back. Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. We have Andre Minkoff and the beautiful, incredible Carmia Wells on Orthodox Side of Ben and myself, gentlemen. Marcus, my name is Gentleman. Marcus of the Gentleman <laughs> Style. I, I I wanted to talk about because we right now we're in the age of information, and Mr. Minkoff and his company specialize in trademarking your brand, your company, your items, your logo to protect you from these poachers. Because this is huge, this is big, and it, it it boggles the mind. We live in an information age where AI is taking over artificial mm. intelligence. You can create, I can create a logo with artificial intelligence. I could create, I mean, we had that what it was, I think it was like last year, where everybody on Facebook was sending their pictures in, and then AI was creating like this model image of you. Can I trademark that artificial intelligence image? Or oh, no, that, because it doesn't belong to me. Like this is curious. that's a major question. Because I got I, I have something to piggyback off of that as well. Because in some of those programs with AI, they have certain uh, disclaimers that they could use your pictures or whatever you do on their system. So I, I would like to know the answer to that. All right. So that circles us back to uh, the beginning of this podcast again between copyright oh. and trademarks. So for copyright, uh, it is uh, actually a big deal whether there was an original aspect of uh, human creativity. For trademarks, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, mm. So uh, as long as it's something that can function as a trademark, like think about this, uh, H&R Block, right? The, uh, the, uh, the, the tax company, right? What's their logo? Do you remember? H and R block is like the it's like um, the green the green block the green the yeah. green the green square, yeah right <laughs> exactly so the green square, uh, there's nothing creative about it, mm -hmm. but it's their brand that it, that you recognize, uh, and mm -hmm. so the it doesn't need to be creative for this to be your brand. All it needs to be is. Uh, different enough from all the other stuff that's been trademarked in connection with similar products and services. So, um, and, 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 and that's really where, uh, you know, if you, if, if you generate a logo with AI and it's different enough from everything that's, uh, that's out there, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter who created like the swoosh, like the, 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 the Nike thingy, right? Uh, that doesn't not, belong to the guy who created the content or the the. They they paid her thirty five bucks to create. Right, that the, doesn't be, that swoosh doesn't belong to them. No, because they bought nope. it. Mm. Right, and and uh, that that's the thing. So trademarks office doesn't care who created it, you know how how it got there, uh, and all, all all they care about is is it different enough, right? And uh, yeah. You had you had one, Carmia. That was good. No, that pretty much answered my question because you know I, I had I always had that type of question because people when the AI uh, programs was coming out and they was using them for different pictures and artwork and stuff. I was like, I wonder how that works if he was to use that for your own you know financial benefit, trying to make money or trying to put it on you know any of your items and sell it off. That makes perfect sense. It answered my question completely. 
actually, I want to, I want to, want to come back for a second. So yeah. we've, uh, please, we've, we've, we've touched on this, and w when there was a break, I actually looked it up. Um, can you guess what year Beyonce filed her first trademark? Was it? Uh, don't make me lie. <laughs> I, I, I want to say maybe possibly the early 1990s. Probably since maybe Destiny's child, right? Probably back then. No, she, she she filed her first trademark in 2000, and her first solo recording um under the name beyonce was in 2002. oh she, she knew what she was doing it. oh she, oh she knew exactly she knew what she was doing and she was still with destiny's child back in the day right she she knew that she would be having a career out of this uh yep. and uh, she's like, she gonna be so i gotta own this i gotta own this brand because you know the the me, music is great but there's a lot more to making it in, into a business than just singing songs for sure and she she, she did the, she did it perfectly mm. shout out to the all the beehive out there shout out <laughs> carmia loves you i don't love you. i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but this is huge <laughs> this is beyond major i Mr. Minkoff, you have given so many nuggets this episode. This is huge. And I can't wait for, for people to really this to sink in because we live in an age of thieves. We live in an age of artificial intelligence and we live in an age of Beyonce fans. Um, but <laughs> I want to say- What we're not going to do is do that. <laughs> I want to say, sir, you've given so many nuggets this episode. Are there any final nuggets? that young boy, that young entrepreneur, that young girl backed against the wall, deciding on whether she wants to cough up that $2,500. Does she have a brand? Does she, does she see herself in the future mm -hmm. taking this to the next level? What would you say to them right here, right now on, on, on the show? I, I'd say this, look, you, you've taken, you've done the hard work. You've started the business. You're hustling. You're trying to make it work. And, uh, People around you might not fully believe that you're going to get to the destination, but don't let anyone convince you that your brand is worthless because it's not. Uh, and uh, it might not be worth very much today, but you know, you know that if you do what you are doing and it gets you where you want it to get you, the brand will be valuable and you need to protect it today. So those people who are laughing at you now saying, Hey, you know, yeah. Trademarking. Yeah. What else are you going to waste your money on? Let them, let, you know, l l let them say what they're going to say when you get to, to wherever you want to go, right? Whether it's six figure business, seven figure business, 10 figure business, doesn't, doesn't matter. All those people laughing at you now and uh, seeding doubt uh, in your ability to make something out of this, they're going to tell you three, five years from now, I always knew you're going you're gonna to succeed. <laughs> but so like yeah. I said, don't let anyone convince you that what you're doing is worthless and uh, go, go out there and protect your brand. Whether you do it with us or you, you do it with someone else. You gotta do it, and uh, if you do decide to do it, there's really no reason to do to do it with anyone other than us. Because, like I said, we have the highest rate of success. We have a hundred percent money back guarantee in case your trade doesn't go through. And a flat fee that serves the, the small entrepreneurs the, the, the most. Because, like Nike, they don't care whether it's two grand or five grand. Like they won't notice. Guys like you will, and uh, we created the whole process around this to make sure that we, we 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 help the little guy protect something that will end up being very valuable in the future really trademark is your investment in the future of your brand i love this i love this y'all know i love this y'all can y'all can tell carmia this is huge carmia what would you say to our audience any advice any nuggets any tips as soon as you answer those questions about your own business venture and you know that it's going to be something serious, you know, it's something that you plan on building, you plan on, you know, having products under and you want it to grow past just the name itself, try, you know, get in touch so you can get started on that process. 
if you know for sure that is your brand name and you want to trademark it don't wait because you don't want no one else to have it either absolutely mr minkoff how can we connect how can my audience connect with you how can our audience connect with you find you get get on board with this train this train has left the station how can we find you sir all right so there's two paths one is the free path is you go to youtube and you search for trademark factory i've published over a thousand videos there so if you have any questions about trademarks i've probably answered that question more than once um and the second path is if you're like i don't i know enough i just need to get this done you go to trademarkfactory.com and uh, you request a call with one of our strategy advisors they're going to walk you through the whole process they're going to explain what you need to trademark where you need to trademark they're going to help you prioritize that's why they call strategy advisors and uh, they're they're going to help you get started so youtube or website get in y'all i can't come behind that two fantastic people that i love they're amazing get on board y'all protect what's important protect your brand protect your company any questions check out that youtube trademark factory and check out that website for the audio listeners um that's www.trademarkfactory.com because hope if your brand it. is worth promoting it's worth protecting facts that part hashtag hashtag facts we gotta let him go <laughs> y'all this man got um he got he's in dubai he's on he's this man living the life right now because that's why i want to be but we gotta let him go he got many more people to help he got many more people, businesses, names, brands to protect. Um, Coca-Cola about to start calling him right the flip now. But he's spilling the tea. He's snitching, y'all. He's snitching. <laughs> so uh, we got to let him go. But like we always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman. Carmia. The unorthodox Southern Bell. And Mr. Andre Minkoff signing off. Love you guys. This one in the books.